The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And since we're not doing that anymore, we go right on. Uh, we've got a market that's down, but of course... Uh, I would say that I'm not going to put a whole lot of stock in what happens today and tomorrow. Uh, today is the first day of options rollover action. Tomorrow is the second one. If today is down 80% of the time, tomorrow is higher. It doesn't mean they're much higher, but it does mean higher. Back-to-back uh, -back win loss or loss wins on options expiration day uh, are rare um, when you compare it to a flip of a coin, 50%. Uh, uh, it's about 80%. So if today's down, tomorrow looks to be kind of up. And the question is uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, volume is not all that exciting so far today. We're only doing about 3.7 billion shares. Uh, of course, uh, we now go into summer trading, and volume on Fridays and Mondays is going to be less. Uh, but, uh, you know, we come on the three-day weekend, uh, and, you know, that's uh, – yeah, pretty good chance of the character, if not uh, the outright uh, direction of the market, going to move. And, of course, if you're bullish, what you'd love to see is these things come uh, and and kind of click a little bit lower on lighter volume throughout the week. What you do want to see also uh, to confirm that or generally what will happen is you'll see the most violently shorted stocks rise even though the indexes tick lower. So watch for Tesla. Watch for all the hated stocks this week. If they've got a 40% short interest uh, on them and the volume starts to uh, decline, there's an, the old chestnut on Wall Street, and that is don't be short a quiet market. Um, the ones that have generally done the worst tend to do the best in the next uh, three or four days going into these three-day weekends, especially – if there's a mountain of people on one side, as uh, I said, maybe potentially short. Uh, Tesla got down to 195s, back up to 205 last time I looked. And it, this is when you start seeing the, kind of the washouts. Um, I've already started buying a handful of things, uh, anticipating a fairly decent turnaround next week. And um, some of those things are squeeze plays for this weekend. Are going into this weekend, some are longer term plays. Uh, and uh, just uh, don't get all caught up in the negative, negative news because my guess is that we're probably fairly close to having it all priced in. Uh, the idea that it's not priced in uh, about 30 minutes after news hits is generally fairly, uh, I discount. If everybody knows it, it's probably in the price. There may be other things out there. There may be uh, weasels and snakes and uh, vermin on Wall Street running around throwing cold water on the market because uh, they're short or they want to buy stocks at a lower price. You never know the exact reason why they do the things they do. It's just they do them, and they can kind of push uh, and uh, do that. But, uh, you know, we're down today. We don't have volume. You've got a couple more days to get volume, Tuesdays and, and Wednesday. Thursday volume will start probably taping, or tapering off about 11 to 12. That is when the B team shows up on Wall Street. And that's the A team traders. You know where they're at? They're already packing their cars. They're already headed for the Hamptons uh, to go live the life of the rich and famous. It's not that they say you have more money. They're just better than the rest of us. Anyway, they're headed off to the Hamptons uh, with their loads of cash. 
and uh, they'll sit five, six hours trying to get up there, and uh, they'll try to even hit it. My guess is they may even leave Wednesday night. Every every time everybody wants to leave a couple more hours early into these weekends, and it just kind of creeps more. Uh, I saw that there's a company making a, 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 a load of cash uh, with, uh, I think, 15-minute helicopter rides uh, for 500 bucks up there uh, to the Hamptons just to dump people off so they don't have to sit in traffic. Uh, but be aware, uh, it's not uncommon to see uh, the sell in May and go away. I got to sneeze. Oh, boy, now that was a quite the uh, sneezing fit. Um, no, it's, if if I get a little bit of chill and these uh, lights uh, that Mr. DeMille put up here so I would look so good on, on uh, streaming video, it's the combination of lights and a pre-destination uh, uh, with cold. Uh, and actually, it is genetic. I think I've said every that before, but uh, it overwhelms uh, the ability for the brain to take in more uh, stimuli. And the result, since the nerves are right next to the sneezing nerves, is you get sneezes, even though I, at the moment don't have any allergies. Uh, what was it? Uh, all I heard from Marge shot was a handful of things. Besides the profanity, I can't say here. And Shotzi, who uh, pooped all over the docks, she had a boat right next to me when I lived on the river in Cincinnati for seven years. Uh, but she had a, a boat called the Double Shot. And her kids would come down there drunk and beat it up. Um, it was more kind of a big runabout instead of the, I had a cruiser with an aft cabin on it. And I lived in the aft cabin. Uh, but she'd get on there late at night, and all I remember, because Lou Pinella was the manager at the time, was, Lou, you got to find me a woman, or I mean a man. Lou, you got to find me a man. You got to find me a man. That's all I remember about it. Uh, and Shotzi, the dog, pooping all over the uh, over the docks. You had to kind of watch. Uh, anyway, we're off 16 points on the S&P cash. Dow's down 60. NASDAQ's off almost 100. Uh, the Russell's down four, and my guess is you're going to start seeing the rebalancing of the markets fairly quickly. Um, Apple's down fairly significantly. I've got a uh, a uh, axe to grind with the CEO and the people uh, slavishly, sycophantically, sycophantically, sycophantically covering him. Um, I've never thought a whole lot of the current CEO, but now they're trying to say he's better than Steve Jobs. And I'm thinking, this guy has got some wireless earphones, but everything else has turned to the brown stuff. So I'm not a big fan. We'll talk about that today. Uh, it had a big haircut from the Apple one. Uh, yeah, got about six bucks. And he was uh, busy uh, vir virtue signaling this weekend instead of making a new product that people wanted to buy. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we got a bunch of stuff going on here. We'll do a little bit of news and then we'll move on to questions and everything else. As always, we like a little history because why well, it's not perfectly a copy, it does tend to rhyme. And it's all just a little bit of history repeated. On this day in 19, uh, excuse me, 1873, San Francisco businessman Levi Strauss and Reno, Nevada, Taylor, Jacob Davis, are given a patent to create work pants reinforced with metal rivets, marking the birth of one of the most famous garments, the blue jeans. Uh, the people that made all the money in the gold rushes uh, weren't people that found gold. In fact, there was only a couple of those guys that made big money. Uh, the money that lasted was all the people that sold the picks and shovels, got into the business of making them. And Levi Strauss, of course, for coming up with blue jeans. It's almost always a tenet that whatever happens, uh, the big land rush, it's always people that are in the, uh, how can I say it, uh, on the sides of the business, not probably the direct business, kind of like Microsoft. Microsoft made a whole lot of money, but it made hundred, no, not just millionaire, hundreds of millions of dollars for maybe more than a thousand people. Uh, and companies that followed them. Uh, so the wealth is immensely, uh, for the most part, around the business and not the business itself. Uh, I talked to a lot of people uh, that all want to get into various marijuana things, and I always say, you know what? Look to Levi Strauss, because it's always the stuff around it that tends to make a lot more money. Everybody thinks that they want to go for the, the business itself, Generally, that's fairly narrow, um, especially in marijuana. I think people are probably just going to go out and start build, uh, making, uh, growing plants in their backyard. If you can grow 10 of them, why would you pay other people to do stuff for you? Um, but, I, you know, I can understand it if you're in the city. Maybe you don't want to do that. My guess, though, is that if this stuff takes off, that everybody's going to have a victory garden. And it's going to be the other stuff. You're going to be wanting to look 
for the picks and shovels and the Levi jeans on this day in 1873. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at uh, charts here. And of course, uh, you have a lot of action today. We've got a couple of questions. Uh, Huawei, which is the way I've heard it pronounced. Uh, everybody seems to pronounce it another uh, different way. Huawei, Howie, Huawei. Uh, of course, it's Chinese, and it's not anywhere close to the way that anybody pronounces it from what I hear. They all laugh, no matter which way we try to pronounce it. Uh, it has been a uh, active arm of the uh, Chinese Communist uh, government for a long time, and uh, I think it's out in the open. Nobody that knows what's going on that has looked at what they've done uh, thinks that that can go on. So it had to it had to end, and of course it ended today. Huawei, I've seen it. Huawei, Iway, uh, I almost pronounced like IX. Been and everybody will tell you, and then the people from uh, Huawei or Huawei will tell you it's nothing like that. And so, and apparently, it's not. You can't even say the word in English. Apparently, the way that it's anywhere close. Everybody tries, and everybody misses. Uh, but You've got a market uh, that's kind of down uh, in anybody dealing with phones. And I think the idea was that if you just made phones, you'd be able to sell them in China, like Apple, uh, where most of the people don't make $1,000 a year, but you're going to sell them a $1,000 uh, iPhone. I never understood that kind of thought. Uh, there's about 100 million people out of the 1.2 billion people that make any money in China. Uh, the dirty little secret is, uh, if you want to talk about the disparity of wealth, it is mostly uh, in China. Uh, you've got a fairly narrow uh, 2% up at the top, uh, about 100 million people that live okay, and the rest pretty much eh, living on 50 bucks a, a month or something. Uh, and the idea is that everybody, that whole billion, 0.2 uh, people are going to be able to go out and buy stuff. I've never understood the whole idea. There have been 100 companies that have gone uh, to China and only to fail because they're not big fans of giving everybody uh, a free ride from another country. They are very, very much uh, into the whole China first thing. Uh, there's a, if, you, if you know anything about the way that they teach people, it's, uh, it's kind of China forever. And it's been around forever, and it's always going to be there. And there's uh, kind of this real patriotic thing about being Chinese and everybody else is um, just, you know, their money is yours if you want to take it. And we're not going to say anything about it uh, because that makes China better. And we're, uh, you know, when people complain about the USA first, uh, it's 100 times worse in China. And they're brought up that way. There's, there's nobody tearing down the uh, Chinese flag, I'll guarantee you at their elementary schools are telling them they can't say a pledge of allegiance. Um, I think that they probably don't go too far if they don't. Um, so a lot of people uh, just kind of are messed up on it. Um, I don't think that Apple deserved to go to 215. I don't think it probably deserves to go down to 180 um, on this news. It may be worth a whole lot less, but it was worth a whole lot less six months ago and not today, as I said, don't like the way that the uh, CEO is out there virtual signaling everybody and uh, trying to apologize for me. Uh, anyway, he's trying to sell a big load down there in uh, Tulane on the graduation speech. I wish he'd get back uh, to work and uh, start making a product that someone wants to buy. He's uh, had uh, six failed products uh, and one success. That's the uh, cordless uh, earphones. Other than that, since uh, uh, Steve Jobs died, he hasn't been on the cusp of anything other than slightly making a newer version of everything else other people, I mean, that Steve Jobs did. So I don't understand this whole thing that he's better than Steve Jobs. Um, I don't think history will be kind to him. Uh, I think the history will probably be written just about like it is for Steve Ballmer at Microsoft. As soon as he leaves, this thing's probably going to take off. 
Uh, but most people will not say that because they're afraid of being called some bad names if they say anything about them. I, of course, am fearless at that. I don't think, uh, you know, there's a reason why the stock's down. That is, he promised something that he could never deliver, and that was China. Nixon went to China. So did uh, the current CEO of Apple. Uh, and uh, hey, got a handful of uh, number 13. Uh, what else do we have going on out here in the questions out here? Uh, anyway, all the stuff. I think it's all going to blow over uh, probably sooner rather than later. Uh, but I don't think there's a big deal. We know that uh, China has had ideas of invading Taiwan for a long time. And uh, they're madder than hornets because they think we're standing in the way. Kind of the same thing that Japan was in about 1936. We'll be back after this. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. The TFNN Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Sale is here. From now through Memorial Day, you can get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars never expire and can be used for any TFNN good or service. Whether you're a current subscriber looking to add instant savings or you're a new listener or viewer that is considering signing up for any product in the near future, now is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars and lock in dramatic savings on all TFNN products and services. We only have a sale like this a couple times a year, so don't let it pass you by. Tiger Dollars are available in three purchase options with a 20%, 30%, and even 40% bonus. Once you purchase your Tiger Dollars, you'll be able to apply them to your TFNN account, and then they are automatically used for all your recurring subscriptions going forward, making it as easy as possible. For all the details on this Tiger Dollar promotion running through Memorial Day, visit the front page of TFNN.com and get your Tiger Dollars before this sale passes passes you by. The art of timing the trade charts has a special running for one week only. From now through Memorial Day, you can save 25% off your first month and we'll ship you a hardcover copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade. The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system. This software package is the fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to analyze stocks using Tom O'Brien's trading philosophy. It automatically provides you with Gartley and butterfly patterns, swing points, retracement levels, confluence areas, expansion targets, and the power law vector indicator with just the click of a mouse. The scanner searches thousands of stocks each day and delivers a list of every Gartley and Butterfly pattern it finds automatically. Just enter the promo code BOOK at checkout. This sale ends Memorial Day, May 27th, so don't let it pass you by. For all the details and to save 25% and get your free book shipped today, check out the art of timing the trade charts on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And what else do we have going on? Uh, anyway, it's no secret that... Uh, China wants to invade, take back Taiwan. They've wanted to do it. They thought that they would get a weak president that would lay down. Um, and so they're going to fight a bit. Now, I don't know if that's a uh, negotiating standpoint with the president. Um, but the question is, uh, how, would it, how would China get all those uh, 
his, their army across the Strait of Taiwan. Taiwan has spent a little bit of money to make sure that they could sink most of the ships coming across. Um, certainly, China could do a lot of damage. Uh, and the question is, what would it do to all of the semiconductor business out there? Uh, but I don't think that China is going to get that land back. And uh, no matter what they think, um, they're going to want to expand their, their sphere of influence. I don't think it's that much different than Japan, probably in 1936, 1938, when we had our trade tariffs with them over metal because we saw them building nothing but giant battleships to come uh, uh, savage most of that land. China's kind of in the, uh, they're more in the kind of the mob way where they'll just kind of lean on people and lean on them and lean on them until they break. And I think that's probably more the issue that we see today, but uh, probably wouldn't be much left in Taiwan if they attacked it. Those uh, semiconductor plants are fairly uh, sensitive to anything happening, and you could shut them down for a year uh, if you knew what they were doing, and I suspect that most of the people uh, that work at those plants would be more than willing to shut them down for a year if uh, China attacked them. In the meantime, we could have uh, places otherwhere. And of course, uh, as I've been saying, uh, most of the smarter people started moving stuff out of China. Uh, why I don't think Apple is much affected by this for manufacturing, because they've already moved at least three-fourths of the Apple production uh, with Foxconn out of China and into India. Um, and, of course, most of the other chips that are actually made for iPhones and other smart chips are either made, and smartphones are either made in South Korea or, or in Malaysia. Uh, the, chip ones in, uh, the cheap ones in Malaysia, uh, in Vietnam, some of them, and, and the rest in uh, the... Uh, in South Korea. Uh, the big winners on this are probably Vietnam, Malaysia, and India, as more people will probably try to get away from uh, getting hit by China, uh, China's trade tariffs. Uh, India has always been a little bit afraid of China since they share a border. Um, so I think we're going to see a big uh, recast. Uh, most of the FANG stocks probably going to be weaker across the summer. We're going to find a lot of business going on here in the United States as people try to figure out how to make products that used to come from China. And eventually, I think that's going to be extremely bullish for the United States to have manufacturing back in the United States. But, uh, you know, I just don't know how actually more people making more things than you in the USA is a bearish case uh, other than slightly higher prices for a while. But I don't know. Everybody's always kind of downer. Uh, I'm kind of always nervous at highs when everybody's bullish, and I'm always kind of uh, sanguine at worst at uh, when we're off and selling. I always think that having kind of the opposite view of the world to where the market's going allows me to at least look for opportunities that most people would not. And, of course, I'm not really into the negative waves of everything's the end of the world for the United States. Just doesn't seem to go that way. Uh, anyway, we'll look at Tesla here real quick. Uh, did get down to 195. Uh, this thing's uh, finally got a short position back up to the highs now, which is around 40%. Uh, so don't be surprised if you have a couple of uh, rip your face off rallies. Uh, this, of course, is a paper tiger. So it's not beyond the scope of reason that this thing opens up 100 bucks down one day or 50 bucks up one another day. It is uh, problematic at best. Um, anything else going on? Our first uh, questions out here. Did they had to answer everything? Uh, da, 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 da. The key slam dude, wowie thing. Yep. Uh, they are a big customer. And they still will be. <laughs> Where are they going to buy anything like that? Duffy in the den is talking about buying test equipment that no one else makes. Where are they going to go? I don't know anybody makes anything like them, certainly at that level. They're going to have to buy the stuff anyway, even if there are tariffs. Uh, did, uh, please comment on your understanding of the impact of Taiwan Semiconductor. Like I said, I don't think, yeah, they're going to buy it gray market from somebody else. They always, you know, 
if you need it, you're really going to buy it. Russia did it for 30 years. It's not, it's not going to be uncommon to, to do that. Um, and people will sell around. Uh, but uh, I don't think that there's a big long-term impact on Taiwan Semiconductor. I think the only difference is the chips they're going to be buying now are going to be going to Vietnam, Malaysia, and India instead of China. And I, that'll get sorted out fairly quickly. But like I said, most of these people, including Cisco, you know, they said that they saw this coming a, a year ago. Um, I didn't understand continuing to have products made in China and having your intellectual property stolen, uh, th some things uh, held up. It wasn't a great deal uh, for most people when you can go to the smaller countries. And those smaller countries are going to be more than happy to pick up that business uh, that has left China. So I think it's a win-win as soon as everybody gets over this Debbie Downer business. And I think that happens this week. And eventually, I think, you know, when we look at the amount of people that could potentially lose a job in the United States, for every million you have here, you probably are going to lose uh, 20 to 40 million in China. So there's a real asymmetry to how this is going to hurt. And, uh, you know, it, it's, I think it's going to get settled. Um, I didn't think it was, I thought it was going to take a year, but if it continues at this pace, uh, it's either some uh, shooting or the deal gets signed. My guess is that China, after acting tough for a little bit, uh, will come back to the table, will make some kind of deal that everybody says they hate so that everybody is happy. That's it. Yep. Uh, there's just too many ways to get things. And if you make something that you can't get elsewhere, which is like Textronics uh, products or uh, the rest of the stuff, there's just there's not going to be a lot of people that can go out and build something like that. Uh, it takes a lot of black magic uh, to get a lot of stuff done. And why, one of the reasons why Qualcomm is still not going to have a whole lot to fear uh, is that uh, they're not going to, you know, you can't just steal their intellectual property and go make something uh, unless you have the people behind it. Uh, black magic, that's when stuff in technology is a little bit more than ones and zeros. You know, it's not like stealing a program when you're making um, integrated chips, especially the way that they are now. We'll be back after this. Give me a call, 877 927 -6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. I was uh, uh, going with a friend uh, who's starting a business in CNC, and he took me to go to the CNC Festival this weekend, mostly because of the trade deal. Uh, apparently, everybody and their dog is buying a CNC machine uh, and getting ready to do a lot of manufacturing uh, here in the United States and uh, avoid the tariffs. And uh, they were selling a lot of machines, both uh, two companies, Haas, H-A-A-S, uh, and Tormach, and there were a couple other ones out there, but those guys seem to be getting all the action. And uh, eh, talk to a couple of people, were pretty uh, interesting stories to tell, but uh, I will digress later. Um, going to look at some of the other stocks again. We're off uh, like 22 points, so we're going to pull back down. As I said last week, uh, certainly looking for a market where we can pull back with lighter volume into Friday, setting up uh, a, a summer rally maybe in June. All we need to do is get a little of this fluff out of the market, which might take us back down to the lows somewhere around 2810 on the S&P cash. Um, was going to look and see how some of the stocks reacted today that we had been doing real good that hadn't been beat up already. Uh, Twillow was one of those, T-W-L-O, down a little bit, but not that bad today. Certainly no volume so far. This thing's been hanging at the highs with no uh, big uh, push. Uh, if you're on the wrong side today, as I said, uh, I can't guarantee a higher price tomorrow in the market, but 80% of the time you get it on options, bounce on options. Uh, Trex, don't know much about this company, was looking at it. Uh, it's coming back into the trading range. March 27th, $58.96, 2.3 million shares. And, uh, and Friday, we were down on a million. Uh, did hold the low, uh, but it looks like we're going to close back in there with uh, about 400,000 shares so far today. Uh, Corvo, of course, uh, getting kind of close to the previous low of February 8th. That was $59.56, uh, 3.75 million shares. Only have 2 million shares, 2.1 million shares now. So you're probably going to get in there with about maybe 3 million shares. So you're going to be lighter than that February 8th low. And of course, that's in the smartphone business. MOS, uh, which is the Mosaic company, looks like it's coming back to this long level of support that goes back to a gap uh, on uh, October 31st of 2017. So you're coming back real far on this. And again, I like that old uh, hog pit trading thing. That's uh, sell them while they're yelling and buy them while they're crying. Uh, this is, uh, for, you know, if you're looking for probably not as fast of a stock for me, but, you know, this pretty nice trading range. If you get this thing down in the, in the uh, 21s somewhere, this looks like some pretty monster support that probably going around for this company for a while. Uh, Guidewire, see that one, uh, up at the top, did test the previous high on half the volume. Uh, energy wasn't that bad, though, up that way. 
107.79 was the September 17th high with one and a half million shares. You got into that with half the volume a couple of days ago and you pulled back down. But you know what? Volume infinitesimal, 252,000 shares today, uh, 626,000 shares on Friday, 752,000 shares on Thursday. Um, so we're going to have to see some of these things actually break to start getting me uh, thinking really poorly. Uh, GoPro, we talked to, to uh, Tom Friday about uh, DJI, uh, the drone company, getting into the business against GoPro. Amazingly, GoPro down fairly light. That may be because D, uh, DJI is actually a company from China. So why GoPro may have a worthy competitor, it may have problems coming in the United States at the right price. Uh, but uh, certainly some of those are already in there. And uh, if the trade deal gets settled, I would look at GoPro as uh, something of a uh, dinosaur or going the way of the dinosaurs. Um, are any chips or caps uh, resistors made in the United States? Uh, don't think so. Uh, I, I think all of them last time I looked, we're either made in Malaysia or, or Vietnam. Um, but that's just for memory. Maybe you can tell me different. I don't think any of them even made in China. I think those they were they were so cheap that no one would even uh, look at them in China. You had to go to even uh, different kinds of areas. Um, I'm not saying there won't be any disruption, but I think that uh, they'll work around China fairly quickly. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, let's look at some other ones. CVS was kind of interesting to me. Uh, this looked like it had, was getting back into some lows and testing some lows. Uh, I just like that the energy was a little bit more coming down here to the last low. You got a couple of lows out here in the top 51 area in the high 51s, March 8th and April 2nd, uh, that were just under 52 bucks, both around 22 million shares. Uh, Friday you had 8 million shares. You're back into the trading range. Uh, this may be one of the healthcare stocks that does well as they uh, look are looking to do more things uh, with uh, nurse providers at uh, CVS uh, stores and, uh, the, and the like. Uh, I don't know how far that's down the road, but these things may become kind of mini hospitals or at least the first line of defense. Uh, and that seems like a fairly decent use of money, but we shall see. CRL, Charles River Laboratory, filling the gap up from the 12th of February. That went up with 540,000 shares. Today we are closing that with 157,000 shares. So I'm just saying that there's opportunity out here. Just turn that frown upside down. Let's not all get too much on the wrong side of the market here if it's going to pop in a week. Not saying it's happened today. Um, now, Curris, which I don't know, C-R-I-S, huge pop up to $2.65 for a penny stock. Been kind of playing around here. It's finally gotten back in here where I generally start taking a look. Um, not a huge volume stock, but uh, there's something going on here. You probably want to take a look at that. Uh, one of the ones that was probably the most important that I could think of was Caterpillar. Uh, this goes back to this sell-off on the 3rd of January of this year. Uh, that day, we had 6.1 million shares. Uh, today, we had about 4.4 million shares so far. Uh, Friday, about 6.1. So heavy machinery does look to be rather weak. CAR is another one. Uh... Oh, yeah. I'm just going to have to play uh, enough with the negative waves. Things will work out and it will be great in America. I can't get, I can't get too sour nor too euphoric. Uh, up on the 21st of February. And uh, man, that gap about half filled in Avis budget group. CAR. C-A-R. I don't know. Is that business going away? This one may be uh, certainly an issue going forward, but uh, that's, uh, I think that's kind of odd man out. 
CAR, but it is uh, doesn't look too bad on the chart. We'll be back after this. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we had a question, I think probably the best way to answer it is uh, what Warren Buffett had to say, why... He says something specific about a stock. I very rarely pay any attention to it, but generally he has some kind of words of wisdom. And uh, that was kind of the one thing he, he said that makes a lot of sense is that the reason that most traders don't make money is that they uh, eh, kind of let their emotions rule to the opposite side it should be. Uh, but Warren Buffett had this to say, and that is you try to be greedy when others are afraid and try to be afraid when others are greedy. And that's why I don't get too much and uh, too depressed when the market goes down. And I don't believe too much of the hype when it goes up. I try to at least stay somewhat balanced instead of the end of the world. And uh, the sky's the limit and pie in the sky. Uh, it kind of ends up averaging out over time. So don't get uh, too wound up uh, or too, uh, too uh, bent out of shape. As I said, I'm kind of looking for the market to come down on lighter volume into Friday and set up a June buying rally. We'll see how that develops. That is uh, uh, just a scenario. And, but I think uh, it probably could do fairly well. I think that uh, the news will get uh, priced in fairly quickly to the market. And we may have a lot of new winners 
and a new leaders as we go and start next week when we come back on Tuesday. I will be gone on Friday uh, and through next week. All the newsletters, everything else will continue. But uh, I'm going to be working on other things in Seattle next week. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about them when we come back. But that's about it. Don't get too wound up while I'm gone. Uh, we're off 24 points on the S&P cash. But again, we're going back and testing some very uh, big lows. And uh, so far, just 4.2 billion shares. So well, that, you know, maybe the volume comes late in the day, and I will change my opinion. But so far, eh, not the end of the world just yet. Sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.